the purchase date. As we said before, credit purchase of goods is recorded in the purchase day book. One credit purchase, not cash purchase. If it's a cash purchase, it goes to the cash book. Any cash transaction will go to the cash book. So first and foremost, we are talking of a credit purchase. And next, we are talking of credit purchase of goods. Goods, goods meant for sale. Goods meant for sale. So only credit purchase of goods is recorded here. If we purchase machinery on credit, credit purchase of an item of machinery, that's an asset, it will not be recorded in the purchase day book. It will not be recorded in the purchase day book. Now we will check the format. But since only credit purchases are going to be recorded in this book, it does not have any debit or credit column. There is no question of putting something on the debit side or the credit side. We know that purchases is always an expense and always debited. So this register, this book does not have a debit or a credit column. How is the posting done? What happens in, in, a, in a purchase day book is we just write X, Y, Z purchased. We've purchased. Maybe the amount is worth 10,000. There'd be other details. We look at the format and the problem. But just to simply understand, and there could be a date here. Similarly, on another date, we purchase something from ABC, maybe worth 20,000. So let us say there were just two credit purchases. If that be the case, we have now a total of 30,000. How is posting done? X, Y, Z, what is our entry? What is our entry for credit purchase of goods? The entry is purchase account debit, right? To suppliers account, to creditors account. So what happens is now we need, this is the journal. We are not going to record purchase account debit to suppliers account separately in the journal proper. The credit purchase, the moment it occurs, on the basis of those bills or those invoices, we just enter it in what is the purchase journal. What do we have there? We'll have the date, we'll have the creditor, the supplier's name, the details of the goods and the total amount and the total amount. Now, this total of the purchases for a period, it may be for a week, it may be for a fortnight, it may be we may take monthly totals. Sometimes they may even take only quarterly totals. This total is taken and posted to the purchases account. Purchase will be debit. So we take full 30,000 and debit it to the purchase account. Individually, we take XYZ's account and we go and credit that account, XYZ's account for 10,000. Then we take ABC's account and credit it with 20,000. That way, everything gets completed. Purchase has got debited with 30,000 and each supplier, supplier 1 will get credited for 10,000, ABC will get credited for 20,000 and the double entry is complete. To some extent, therefore, it saves the trouble of posting each and every entry to the purchase account. The monthly total the weekly total or the quarterly totals only are directly posted to the purchase account. If we want to know the details, we come to the purchase journal or purchase table and look it up. So please remember only credit purchase of goods, credit purchase and of goods is recorded in the purchase table. Let us look at the Format of the purchase day book is like this. There will be the date, particulars wherein we will record all the details, the ledger folio when we post to the individual ABC's account, XYZ's account, the folio to which we are making the posting would be mentioned here. Details, there may be a lot of breakups, several invoices, transportation charges, additions, whatever details are here and then the amount.